Shalom, first off, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, true name Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is with comforts and guides, especially during these times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone, teaching the world with truth and sincerity, and salutations to the elect. Through the Spirit, I'm back with a lesson to say that we have the true comforter. And the comforter is the Holy Spirit, the Rakakwadash, the understanding of these scriptures. And like I stated before, because of these perilous times that are to come, like the scriptures say in Isaiah 33 and 6, this wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of our times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is the treasure. Because a lot of people in this world seek comfort in things that are no comfort. Like drugs, entertainment, alcohol, etc. And we understand in this truth that ultimately the comfort is through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. First, which I'm going to start off is Proverbs 18 and verse 10. It reads, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. And a lot of people don't have the true names of the Heavenly Father and His Son, which the Heavenly Father name, like I stated before, being Yahweh, which means He is or He to be or He exists. By Hashem, which means in the name of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Yah meaning he, Yahweh Shai meaning deliver or savior, because he's going to save, deliver the elect of the nation of Israel out of the destruction to come. During the midst of World War III. And we understand that these scriptures were written a full time for our learning. And that's what we try to teach and tell tell our people and persuade them to fear the, fear the Lord because we understand everything is of the Lord, whether good or evil. And we got to, you know, reference the generation of old. So I'm going to go to Sirach or Ecclesiasticus and Apocrypha chapter 2. In verse 10, it reads, Look at the generation of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded or did any abide in the, his fear and was forsaken for or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? And when you call upon him, like I said, you got to call the true names. You, you won't be saved by Jesus Christ, Allah, Buddha, or any of these idols. I'm going to go from there to 1 Samuel, chapter 2, and verse 6. I'm going to start at verse 6. It reads, The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. So understanding that, and if you believe that by having faith, you know that. You have nothing to worry about because whatever Yahweh Shem Yahshai wants to happen, it's going to happen. So you you better off just being you, where well, you have no need to to envy or be covetous of your neighbor. Because if the Lord wants you to have it, you're going to have it. And some people receive gifts by Satan. So that's why it's best that you got to be content. And like I said, and if you had a true comfort, you will be content. So since I said, I'm going to go from there to 1 Timothy chapter 6. I'm going to start at verse 6. It reads, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and the snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men into dis and destruction and perdition. But the point is, it said, it said, be there with content. Ultimately, 
be content with your daily bread that you receive to get to through the day because you don't want to be ultimately so high up in this kingdom to the point that it caused you it could become a snare to you and i say this kingdom because this is not our kingdom this is not the Israelite kingdom. This is not the Lord's chosen people's kingdom. This is Satan's kingdom. And the person doing the bidding of Satan in the flesh is the so-called white man. His forefathers, Esau, Edom. If you read the story of Jacob and Esau, they have the spirit of Esau as well as, you know, the spirit of Cain. It's called reincarnation. And Jacob got his name changed to Israel, who the Israel is Yasharala in the Hebrew means he prince of power, the Lord's chosen people which today consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners that look like heathen, but are not heathen because their father seed line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel. Because ultimately, we were scattered around the world due to being disobedient to the Heavenly Father in our past generation as well as you can see what's going on today. And if you can receive it, you understand that the Lord said, in our kingdom, which is going to be established soon, according to the prophecies written in the scriptures, that when we when we have the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, which will be, will be everlasting kingdom of righteousness, we won't see war. So that's more proof that the people over there in Israel, that's the heathen that are taking over our land, are not the Lord's people because they're going through hell right now. But I'm going to go from there to um, John chapter 14. And I'm going to start at verse 15. Well, I'm going to start at 14. It reads, if he, this is your house, I speak. And if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And you got to ask in the true name. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray that the Father, pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither know of him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So like I said, we're going to have the true comfort. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So the Lord said that he will send us the comforter. And like I said, that's the Holy Spirit to understand what's going on in these times. I'm going to jump over to verse 26 it reads but the comforter which is the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you and that's why the ones that can receive this truth is 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 it was given to us from the from the um from the womb because, like I said, majority of our people, two-thirds of our people who are going to have to be destroyed on this side and brought back into the kingdom, reborn. They don't have the comfort. They, they didn't receive the spirit to receive this truth. Because ultimately, Yahweh Bashem Yahshua only wants to deliver one-third on this, this, um, this side. Of the nation of Israel. But I'm going to go from there to John chapter 17 and verse 9. It reads, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And that's talking about the elect of the nation of Israel. Yeah, that was Yahweh Shah speaking. So that cuts that John three the John three sixteen scripture when the Christianity tries to lie and say that for God so loved the world because if you go into the word world because you got to go into these words the Greek is cosmos and it's talking about the world of Israel that's why he said I pray for them in John seventeen and I pray for them I pray not for the world because he's talking about the elect but I'm gonna um. Jump over to verse 14. It reads, I have given them thy word and the 
and the world have hated them because they are not the, of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So we understand that Yahweh Bashim Yahushua is not of the world. So ultimately, a lot of people are not going to resonate with this truth. So ultimately, they're going to not like us. But we understand that because we have the comfort of the scriptures that tells us and give us the things that we will go through and the um, trials and tribulations that we will go through. It lets us know that we will go through these things before we receive the kingdom. But like I said, ultimately the point is that to say that if you can receive the truth, you, the point was made that we have the true comfort of the scriptures. We got to endure to the end. Lord willing, we're part of that number to be delivered. And once we receive the kingdom, like the scriptures say in, um, I believe, Revelation 21, maybe in the fourth, cha fourth verse, that the Lord will wipe away all tears. So whether we have to, you know, lose loved ones on this side, we understand that this is the conditions of the battle. We have the comfort to understand that the Lord has to do these things because that's what's written in the scriptures. Because everyone isn't going to receive this truth. And ultimately, if a person isn't part of the elect, then ultimately they truly don't love your Abashim al as we do if you are a part of that number. But they will be born back in the kingdom perfect if they're of the nation of Israel. You got to understand that and they'll be perfect. So you just got to see them on the other side. But that's all I got. Call Haloim Lai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Yahweh Kakwadash. Shalom.